Essendon people reference of John Worsfold on the weekend. We heard it in the opener. It rankled many Essendon uh, people, ironically, fans. <laughs> you mentioned the word Essendon people here last week, which I think is where it began. Let's have one more look at it before we get into this. Yeah, I understand that uh, Essendon people um, think that Essendon should be better, but they've also got to understand that the competition challenges clubs now to um, work to the same rules. So the same rules of the draft and the salary cap, and no one team has any more right to be successful quicker than any other team just because they're a big-name club. A two-part question here from me. Do you think that was aimed at you? And secondly, do you agree with the perception in the footy world that he's distancing himself from the team when he speaks about them as if they're somebody else? Uh, yes, for the second part, because I think... That, and that's just natural. I think that uh, the club made the decision with good intentions, but at the end of the day, if you know you're leaving at the end of a season, I don't think you're the right man for the job. I think in any case, every year, you'll say, oh, he's not going to be our coach next year, but he's going to see out the season. It lasts about seven days, and you never, ever see out the job. So I think in hindsight, and Kane was probably the first to speak of it, that... That should never have been the role for John Worsfold. Once you are not the senior coach anymore, I think it's time to leave. So I don't think it's helped Ben Rutten or it's helped John Worsfold. That, that was a low blow about almost implying that Essendon had tried to take shortcuts in the past yeah, uh, and, and wanted to do... I mean, this is a club who have been in trouble with the AFL on two occasions in the last 20 years and been severely penalised and the whatever it takes, etc, etc. I didn't see it so much as Matthew as the coterie groups and the powerful political figures around the club who no one since Kevin Sheedy has been able to really get around get you, all space you never games. ever hear that like that whether it was an accident oh, it was or otherwise extraordinary. I thought it was a real attack on the club and the way they do things and further to the appointment it's sort of emerging now Matthew that I, I think Daniel Richardson the head of football would have liked Ben Rutten to be the coach this year and I think with, with Xavier Campbell, they did talk to senior figures like Alan Richardson to help him. For some reason, Xavier Campbell and the board went with the transition plan. That They sold to me and sold it well. I thought, you know, I thought they made good points, but it was largely a money decision, perhaps, wasn't it? And also a, a bit of saving face? Yeah, quite possibly. And they have to work out who they are, Hutchie. And I think that you look at the list... The club's divided got... when they're making yeah. the appointment I mean, right. in the first place. I, I think they lacked the guts, didn't they, to sack him a year yeah. ago, when that was probably the intent for a period of time there. No, and, no club and probably likes. part respect for what he'd done for them during that, that horrible... Moore's it was a wartime relationships leader. relationships haven't been great. I don't think he and um, Adrian Dodoro were going to part on great terms. And you just wonder what Ben Rutten's but inheriting now. It's just got a bit of Moldhouse Carlton about it all of a sudden, hasn't it? And that's... It's weird to say that because he's such a revered yeah. figure. Well, actually, in, I think in Saturday the... can't come quick enough with the season yep. ends for them uh, and then they've got to make some strong decisions um, and, and just want to look at how they're playing. How do they play? If you were to turn up to watch an Essendon game, what is the identifiable style? And uh, that's what is sort of the big question at the moment. How do they play? And they fall back on the Collingwood win earlier in the year, which is their, their brand, but we haven't seen it since such. Dan Richardson you spoke of, he spoke about their game style in this interview. A brand of footy where we're well connected between defence and attack, playing more of the ball in our forward half and setting up well behind it. We've struggled to maintain that consistently. You know, I think injuries and personnel have had an impact on that. We feel we've seen some growth in that game and game style, but yeah, we understand that it's been frustrating. So you asked Daniel that yes. question on 3AW. Is that what we're seeing? No, no. Last year, they, we knew that they were playing Russian rule, that going hard off half-back. Well, they've become 18th in that area because Rutten has slowed them down, more a defensive style. Forward half disposals against 13th, time in forward half 14th and their pressure 15th. So it's nothing that I think Essendon supporters would have been hoping for. And on the list, they have well, to sort out what they are, Carrie. They brought in Stringer, Saad, Scheel, uh, Devin, Devin Smith. Smith. Uh, but that suggests that they're close. I don't think they would know and, where And now player now. retention has come an issue. Yeah. Um, Jake Noel has brought up Joe Danaher again tonight in The Age, suggesting Geelong and now a front-runner for his services. You've got Fantasia. You've got Adam, um, Saad. Adam Saad, who would be... That would be devastating well, to lose him. Well, they're still paying the price of, uh, I suppose, generous decisions they made around the time of the drug sucker. So they had to deal their way out a little bit, Kane, on this, and they gave contracts to Hooker and Hurley in particular at that time that were really symbolic as much as they were of a need basis and they look 
laborious those contracts at the moment, both of them. Heppel's obviously struggled with injury and Bell Chambers is on the edge of finishing up. And you're right, they, they don't really seem... They thought they were suddenly in the, in the window or in contention and, and got ahead of themselves. And Somehow Ben Rutten walks into his first game as a senior coach next year mm. under pressure, which is not the intent of the... Of the the transition is designed to make it it's easier. Failed. It's failed. And I think Where do they go, well, Kane, if they've got well, turnover? Well, I think that that's the issue with their list. They're very generous with those players that stay. They're one of the goodwill stories out of the players that committed to the club after they've been through such a hard time. But player retention, I think, is going to be an issue. And the way that Lordo has spoken about, do we rebuild or do we continue to top up? It will be fascinating to see what they do. And the captaincy also is something that I think they need to address. Heppel just has to focus on getting his body right and, and do a Travis Boak and get that and his footy set. But then I don't know who captains the club. Is it Shiel? Um, you know, is it him or is it Merritt? But he was vice captain. Now he's not even in the leadership group. So some big decisions in that space as well. Uh, just on on the game style you mentioned. So I wonder whether they've coached them like they are in contention. You heard John say they expect to win a chance to win the flag. Rutten and Carousel have got a great record of coaching well drilled teams in finals who are of that quality. I wonder if they just misread this. That that game style looks too advanced for where those players are as, as, as athletes. And you have to know, you can't just bring a game style from another group of players to your group. So he's got to put his own spin on it because Sard and McKenna and Smith and Shield, they're, they're different players to what Richmond have got. So I don't think the style has suited the Essendon players. And I think there's been some players who haven't got behind the style that's wanted to be played. So I think there'll be big list decisions at the end of the year where they'll back in Ben Rutten and they'll say to players, are you in or you're out? So I think there'll be a lot of mass change at the Bombers in terms of the list.